On this channel I've made plenty of videos on invasive species. These are of course creatures that have been introduced into ecosystems where they don't belong and have had a negative effect on the ecosystem itself. But in some cases animals are introduced into non-native ecosystems and aren't necessarily viewed as invasive. Of course the USA is one of the worst affected areas when it comes to introduced and invasive species and I will be focusing on the USA today as I'll be going through five invasive and introduced species in the USA. And for our first species we'll be heading over to the Indian subcontinent as we have the blue now this large mammal is actually an Asian antelope and is the largest of all the Asian antelopes. They can stand up to 1.5 meters at the shoulder and weigh almost as much as a bongo. Their common name of blue bull comes from the blue slate color of the males. The females and the young on the other hand don't share this coloration as they're more of a tawny brown color. In the wild they're normally found in areas with scattered trees and grassy plains and they are also common in agricultural lands. In these areas they come into conflict with humans because their size means that they can decimate crops. Because they are so large one of their only predators are tigers, but smaller predators such as dolls and striped hyenas are known to go after their young. But as well as living on the Indian subcontinent, these Indian antelopes have also found themselves a home in the USA. Today one of their strongholds is Texas, and they've been here for a surprisingly long amount of time. They were brought to the US from India as zoo animals, but were released into Texas in the early 1930s. These large antelopes have since thrived in Texas, with the population around the Texas-Mexico border thought to be around 30,000. As well as Texas, they're also thought to be feral in Alabama, Florida, and Mississippi. As these mammals are so large, they can have negative effects on the ecosystem, as they're known to compete with native mammals, and they also threaten livestock by spreading deadly ticks to the herds. So although these antelopes are very large and impressive, they have turned into pests in Texas. But for our next species, we'll be heading to the forests of Madagascar, as we have the ring-tailed lemur. Now this species of lemur is probably one of the most famous, mostly because of a few animated films. This lemur is normally found in the southern region regions of the island, and mostly inhabits gallery forests. In these areas they are opportunistic omnivores, mostly feeding on the fruits and leaves of one particular tree, but when available it will also eat grasshoppers and small vertebrates. When it comes to lemurs, the ring-tailed lemur is a bit of an oddball. They spend about 40% of their time on the ground, which is extremely rare for lemurs. Most species are very clumsy when they're on the forest floor, and because they are very vulnerable here, most species spend as much time as they can in the trees. Although they may look quite similar to other members of their family, Family. Their closest relatives don't look very similar to them at all. They're thought to be most closely related to the two bamboo lemurs, which are much smaller and seem to look very different in appearance to them. Unfortunately, like many other species in Madagascar, these ring-tailed lemurs are also endangered. Habitat destruction is one of their main threats, but they are also hunted for bushmeat and for fur clothing. Their situation has got a lot worse over the recent years, mainly due down to the political situation in Madagascar. They are currently thought to be more in captivity than there are in the wild, with their thought to be a wild population of around 2,000 individuals. Apart from Madagascar, the only other place that these lemurs can be seen roaming three is the USA. They can be found on one small island in Georgia, known as St. Catherine's Island. These lemurs were introduced here as part of an experiment to see if these primates could be released and managed effectively to eventually increase the population of this endangered species. Since St. Catherine's Island is an island, they are unable to escape from here and they are monitored and sometimes taken care of by specialists. So although the future doesn't look great for them in Madagascar, Thankfully, they have a new home in Georgia. But for our next species, we'll be heading over to Sub-Saharan Africa, as we have the Nile Monitor. Now, the Nile Monitor is one of the largest and most powerful lizards in the world, reaching almost 2.5 meters in length and weighing up to 15 kilograms. These reptiles thrive around rivers, where they feed on a wide range of smaller prey. They are known to be quite unfussy and will even target very dangerous prey. They will ransack unguarded crocodile nests, and they will even work together to lure the female away so that they can steal the eggs without her noticing. Their long tails aren't just for show, as they work as a counterweight while they're running, and they can also help to power them through the water. But as well as being a predator, the Nile Monitor also has to look out for predators itself. Its biggest enemy is the Marshall Eagle, as these large birds have been known to take on any individuals weighing up to 4 kilograms. As I'm sure many of you know, as well as being found in Sub-Saharan Africa, today these large lizards can also be found in Florida. Florida has become home to hundreds of invasive species, but this monitor lizard is one of the larger ones. They were first discovered here in the 1990s, and they are thought to have been introduced here as escapees from collections. Genetic studies have shown that the lizards in Florida are part of a subpopulation that originates from West Africa. This subspecies is now often recognized as its own species, the West African Nile Monitor. Although it can be very exciting to find these guys in Florida, they can have massive negative impacts on the ecosystem. As they like to feed on crocodile eggs back home, they also like to feed on alligator eggs and American crocodile eggs in Florida. This isn't just bad for the crocodile 
reptiles and alligators, but also bad for the rest of the ecosystem. American alligators are known to control the populations of other invasive species, such as Burmese pythons. So although these lizards are very large and impressive, they really shouldn't be in Florida. But for our next species, we'll be staying in Africa, but more precisely southeastern Africa, as we have the vervet monkey. This monkey is normally found in areas of savanna, as well as riverine woodlands. In these areas, they are omnivores, mostly feeding on wild fruits, flowers and leaves, but will also target insects and birds' eggs. Although this monkey may seem very ordinary at first, it is one of the more interesting monkeys out there. One of the things that makes this monkey interesting is something that I can't really show on YouTube. There isn't really a written rule about showing monkey balls, but I'm guessing it's not really allowed. I have blurred it for you here, but they do have very brightly coloured genitals, with them looking very similar to bubblegum bottles in my opinion. But as well as having very fancy genitals, these monkeys also exhibit some very interesting behaviour. Its behaviour is thought to be one of the most human-like of all the primates, with them showing characteristics such as hypertension, anxiety and dependent alcohol use. They have shown to have a taste for alcohol, with them stealing people's drinks and also eating fermenting sugarcane. But today this monkey isn't only found in East Africa, as it can also be found in a few Caribbean islands, as well as Florida. They were introduced into Florida from a tourist attraction between the 1950s and the 1970s. Although they can have a negative impact on the native species, today they're not really seen as invasive. This is mainly due down to the fact that they can only be found in very small numbers, with there thought to only be a few hundred in Florida. If you do see these monkeys in Florida, it's best not to feed them, as many primates do get aggressive when you give them food. And this is probably the first time that I've had to mention an animal's balls on this channel. But for our next species, we'll be heading to Northern Africa, as we have the Northern Red Bishop. Now I think it's fair to say that this is a very beautiful bird. Its striking red-orange coloration contrasts with the black, and this makes it stand out in almost any landscape. These birds are normally found in tall grasslands and cultivated areas, usually near water and marshes. In these areas, they primarily feed on grass seeds, but are also known to catch small insects. Now this bird is often confused with its very close relative, the Southern Red Bishop, but the black patch on their head extends further back on their crown and further below on their bill. Although the males can be very striking and colourful, the females and the juveniles are more of a dullish brown colour, but because of the colour of the males, these are popular cage birds and are kept as pets across the world. It's thought this is how they made their way to North America, as they were first sighted outside of their native range in Hawaii in 1965. Five years later, they were spotted in Southern California, and they reside there to this day. They still have a relatively small population in this area, which may be one of the reasons why they aren't seen as invasive. As they're so beautiful, I think most people are happy that they're in the USA, and they may be here for many years to come. If you think you know of any other animals that could be on this list, then let me know down in the comments below, as I'm sure I'll make a part two to this video. But thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed. If you liked it, please leave a like, and subscribe if you want to see more videos like these. But until next time, goodbye.